everyone. Thank you so much for stopping to watch Mama Junior. Welcome. If this is your first time, please hit the subscribe button. And if this is not your first time watching Mama Junior, welcome back. I appreciate you stopping by to check me out today. So looking at the title, we are talking about Christmas and what do the lonely do at Christmas, okay? So for my R&B lovers, people who listen to the same radio stations I listened to growing up, the first thing that automatically comes to mind when I see those words or think about those words is a very popular song by a group called The Emotions. And they have a song literally titled, what do the lonely do at Christmas? What do they do? What do they do at Christmas? Yes, you cannot help but think about that song when you see those words. Again, if you are an R&B lover and you grew up how I grew up, right? So I didn't play the song and hopefully my singing wasn't anywhere <laughs> near <laughs> copyright infringement so <laughs> I didn't want to play it six degrees of separation somebody who knows somebody would be done told somebody that this video was going on and did pay the emotions for the little snippet that I may have chose to use so uh, I didn't play the song but you can look it up it's called what do the lonely do at Christmas by the emotions now that song will have you sitting in the basement in the dark crying with a bottle of liquor okay that song will get you there and keep you there okay you will have it on repeat and you will just be a blubbering mess okay i remember that song all so well growing up if my mom had gotten into an argument with her uh boyfriend or something like that and she just was not having it for the holidays that song was on repeat okay so i do not recommend if you have a broken heart for you to listen to that song because it will keep you there okay <laughs> so what we are going to talk about is how to not be in that sad somber mood for christmas okay or the holidays I know it has to be tough to go through the holidays when you recently broke up with someone that you've been with a while or you thought was going to really work out and now you're sitting there alone for the holidays, right? Um, the holidays, I mean, there's no other picture painted other than it being a time to celebrate and embrace loved ones and family, right? So when you've had that changed or shifted in some way it's hard to really keep pushing through that time of year without feeling down you know so you can't avoid the music you can't avoid the commercials you can't avoid the decorations in every you know shopping center and store um the highways are decorated with lights and i mean it's just a, a time all over the country where people are trying to promote and push the festivities of this time of year. So um, being that this is also our first COVID Christmas, people are alone and lonely for the first time due to COVID situations, right? So given the fact that you may not have just broke up with somebody, you may have lost somebody. I wanted to create this video to kind of motivate and encourage you because it can't be easy, you know, dealing with those types of losses during this time. It's never easy. I don't care what's going on to deal with the loss of a loved one, but especially around these um, times of year, you know, different holidays where you remember them so vividly for whatever, you know, they brought to the table, um, whatever energy and whatever spirit they had, you know, it's very hard to push through and act like they never were. And I would, I would hope that you don't have that goal to ever get to the point of acting like they never were but I, I want you to also um remember that you are still here and you have to do what's best to get you through and keep you in a good positive healthy place okay 
So um, if you just as a, you know, side note have truly lost someone and you're dealing with things um, and you just, you don't seem to know how to figure it out. I've said it many, many times before and I will say it again. Please get some therapy. Please get some counseling. There is nothing wrong with finding someone to speak to, to help you deal with the emotions that you're feeling, which are absolutely valid, absolutely justifiable and absolutely normal. But um, sometimes it, it's overwhelming and it becomes too much. So I would truly encourage you to reach out to a counselor or therapist if you are struggling with the loss of a loved one and you don't know how to function and cope with their um, passing. Um, you don't have to go to a therapist. You don't have to go to a counselor's office. You can call a crisis line. They're absolutely anonymous. Um, and there's 24 hour crisis lines all over the nation that will answer the phone immediately and just and just talk to you if you're dealing with some things okay so my suggestions however um in dealing with a lonely christmas right so your christmas might be lonely just because you're trying to respect the social distancing that we're we're um recommended to um respect right so what do you do um I know a lot of people are gearing up with their masks and different type of masks with the face shield and things like that. And they are still planning to get together with their loved ones. And I am not in any way going to tell you um, that that's wrong. If you are using PPE, then I think that you should be able to, you know, get a, get together with your loved ones in some regard. Um, Try just to remember not to be too chummy, too close, too many hugs and kisses, you know. Um, try to really respect the, the PPE because we all know that people can be asymptomatic and not know it. And it would break my heart if I was around some of my loved ones and gave them the virus because I just didn't know that I had it. So try, if you're planning to be around people anyway, just, you know, use your PPE. And that's better to me to be around people with a mask than to not be around those people at all. Keep your distancing, keep telling jokes, have fun with your family and your friends, but give me some space, you know? We have to respect what's really going on out here. So make sure that you're doing that, right? Um, so one of the things that I would recommend or suggest for you if you are anticipating to be long, alone or lonely during the holidays is to um, find a charity or organization that you respect and admire and find out what you can do to support them right now. Um, there are so many different organizations that you can assist and help out with. And it may be just as simple as calling them or going on their website to find out how you can volunteer once or multiple times to support what they do. Um, you may just send in a monetary donation. Um, for me, I really like the Salvation Army. So if you have ever donated, you know, clothing or, um, you know, um, furniture or anything like that to them, they definitely try to make sure that they give those things to the people with the most need. Think about becoming a bell ringer. Um, I haven't looked into what it would entail to become a bell ringer, but I know they always want volunteers. And this now is the time to ask how do I become a bell ringer? What would my commitment need to be? I'm sure that type of thing, because it's volunteer, would be negotiable. Hey, I can do this, you know, a couple times a week or, you know, a few hours here and there. Find out what options you have to become a bell ringer. I know there was a video that went viral last year. I believe it was last year, maybe the year before, where there was a guy standing out front of a, a Walmart, I believe, and he was playing on his radio for everyone to hear the wobble song. And he he was doing the wobble while he was shaking the bell and it, it just made it fun you wanted to watch him do this dance while he was doing the bell ringing for the Salvation Army so you can make it what you want it to be it could be absolutely fun for you you don't have to just stand there shivering with your bell you can make it fun and you can feel and you will feel good about 
doing something so selfless because it has nothing to do with you. It's about raising money for the Salvation Army, okay? So if that's, you know, a charity that you um, like and respect or others, you know, find out what you can do to help support the charity that you like and admire um, during this holiday season. Um, another thing is find out how to start doing some of those things that you have put off for so long. One of those things being cooking, baking. Now, okay, you're by yourself, you're alone. Who am I gonna cook and bake for, Mama Julia? <laughs> cook and bake for the people that you can give those things to. The people at your job, your neighbors, um, your local police and fire departments are open to the public. You can walk right in and give something that you've baked to them. Now, if you're not very good at that and you love that idea and want to do it, go buy some pre-made wrapped goods from your local grocery store and take it to them. That makes them feel so good because guess what? Even if they aren't um, separated from family and friends because of death or, you know, COVID situations, they have to work. Some of them are not on duty that particular day or those particular days, but a lot of them still have to make sure they're available at three in the morning in case your house catches on fire. They have to be available in case, you know, a, a business is broken into or, you know, someone is robbed. They don't get the days off just because, it's the holiday. You and your job, you may not think anything of it, but guess what? In an emergency situation, someone has to be there. So take those baked goods to your local fire and police agencies because they can't be around family and friends. And I promise you, um, as a first responder myself, they absolutely appreciate those types of gestures. So maybe it's something that you really, you know, have never baked or never cooked and you really want to give it a try put that YouTube video on, video on of that individual who looks like they're, you know, giving you step by step how to do it. Set up your uh, phone, prop it up, go buy all your items, play it and make that thing that you absolutely want to make and you have just been putting it off for however long, right? Go and make something, bake something, bake a whole lot of it, right? Um, you can also look on, um, there's a website, um, it's, it's escaping my mind. Oh shoot. Um, it starts with an E, but it, um, it has different, e uh, Eventbrite. I would just remember it has different events and things going on in your area that you can kind of search and narrow down and also meet up. Uh, my cousin in California recommended to me the meetup site, and I was able to go to a Toastmasters meeting. Toastmasters is um, a group that is, I believe, everywhere, and it kind of helps you with public speaking, okay? So I'll let you dig a little bit into that if you just want to know a little bit more, but the Eventbrite and meetup websites have different things that might be free or five bucks to participate in. Um, I did a line dancing class by finding um, an event on, um, I think it was Eventbrite, but it could have been the meetup site where they just had an, a line dancing class and it was so much fun. And it just takes your mind off of things. It just allows you to be in um, fellowship more or less with people who are like-minded, who have like um, similar um, interests as you. You can take classes through the Eventbrite site. So just go to the Eventbrite site and just kind of see what's available. It, it might be something in there that really, you know, sparks an interest for you to go and do. A lot of people do the paint and sip classes and they're doing them um, virtually now through your Zoom. Find out if there's some way for you to do those types of things. Um, this time of year, it might be time for you to clean your house. It might be time overdue for you to clean up your home. I promise you, any time growing up, my mom made me clean my room, or I just got the notion to do so, which was not often. I would change the furniture around, put the bed in a different place, put the dresser in a different place, my desk in a different place, and vacuum and change the sheets and all those things. And it felt good just to have that 
new feel to my living space, right? And the same thing with your home. Maybe, you know, tackling the whole house is too much, but tackle a certain room, maybe a room that you spend a lot of time in, your bedroom, your 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 office, your living room, you know, uh, your kitchen, you know, throw away some things that you've been holding on to that you have not and will not use. Maybe donate those things if they're in good enough condition. Um, but clean up, clean up a space, kind of do a purge, if you will, and get rid of some of those old or, or un- use items that you've been hanging on to that you probably don't even remember that you still have. Clean out some of those covers, um, your closets, donate, you know, clothes and things like that. Um, call your hospitals, find out if there's a way for you to volunteer at your local hospitals. Find something to do that will make you productive. Start your diet again. Start it again. I started Weight Watchers a month ago. I'm down 12 pounds. Woo woo! <laughs> I am proud of my 12 pounds, by the way. Um, but start your diet again. Start it again. I talk to people, my um, coworker neighbor friend, I call her coworker neighbor friend because she is literally all of those things. Um, she does amazing with her eating and exercise and I just talked to her about it and she really gave me some great tips and tools and she recommended the Weight Watchers. So guess what? I looked into it. I paid $13.80 a month. $13.80 a month. I signed up for three months. This first month, I lost 10 pounds. The other two, yep, just the two days in December, I've lost those two pounds. So I know I could spend $13.80 on one meal, not even for the whole day. So I definitely feel like I'm worth investing $13.80 for you know one month. So try your try your your weight loss, your diet thing again. Um when I was um I don't remember if I was actually divorced yet or just separated, but when I was going through my divorce, I'll say going through it, um a friend of mine invited me to um an aerobics class. It was a hip hop dance class and it was free at the YMCA. Um she told me to come and I'm like <sighs> thinking to myself, I don't want to go to that. I want to sit here and be miserable. I want to sit here and cry and feel sorry for myself. And obviously I didn't tell her that, but she invited me and I don't remember her really pushing, but I was like, okay, fine. It's one hour out of my day. And I went to that class and it was hard mentally to go because I did not want to be there. It was hard physically because I was exerting all that energy in a hip hop dance class and that wasn't something part of my regular routine but it was so worth it and necessary at the end because I was able to spend an hour out of my day not feeling sorry for myself one hour out of my day where I was doing something productive okay so that is the overall goal and gist. What do the lonely do at Christmas? You decide. You decide what you will do. Go spend some time with somebody as much as you can outside in your coats and hats across the table. Meet up at a restaurant that's still open. Find some way to connect, find some way to be productive, find some way to not be in your head because idle time is dangerous. And if you have a broken heart for one reason or another, it's not gonna be productive for you to just sit in your sorrow, okay? So let me know what you think. Write, um, excuse me, comment at the bottom um, some things that you think would be productive that I didn't mention or some things that you think that were good ideas. I appreciate so much you watching. If you didn't subscribe, go ahead and subscribe. Click that like button and share this video. You know someone who needs to hear this video. You know someone needs to hear this video. Please share this video. Thank you for watching. Bye.